everybody it's Christina from pretty distressed welcome back to my channel and happy new year this is my first video of 2021 and we are saying you are toast 2020 I am going to be teaming up with my friends at Dixie Belle paint company today they have sent me a mystery box I have no idea what's inside of it we're gonna open it up and I have to use these products on my piece and I'm teaming up with my friends, Cristana from Bella Renovare and Brandy at Brush by Brandy. They have their own mystery boxes and we have a huge giveaway for you guys too. So if you wanna learn all the details and see me make over this piece, just keep watching. This is the piece I'm going to be working on today. I got this from my local Goodwill for $50 last year. It does have a lot of veneer damage, but it is an old piece and really cute. And I thought I could make something special out of it. If you are new here, I am a furniture refinisher and you will find a thrift flips and furniture flips like this on my channel every week. So if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe before you leave. And if you hit that bell notification, you will be notified anytime one of my videos goes live. To start off my piece, I am giving it a good cleaning with my Dixie Belle White Lightning. This is a powder soap, TSP soap that you mix with warm water. I'm just gonna scrub down the whole piece and then give it a good rinse with some clean water. Like I mentioned in the intro, this video is sponsored by Dixie Belle Paint Company and they are gonna be giving away $500 to their website to one lucky winner. It's super easy to enter. All you have to do is like this video, make sure you are subscribed to Dixie Belle Paint Company's YouTube channel, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and then leave a comment below letting me know your favorite product that I opened up in this mystery box. There is also going to be a winner on Kristana's video as well as Brandy's video, so make sure you go watch their videos too and enter over there. You have three chances to win. It's going to run for a week and I will leave the rest of the details down in the description box. So check it out. Holy guacamole. I like, I like what's going on Oh, that's here. the name of the paint. Yeah. <laughs> Cotton. Ooh, caviar. I kind of like this. Okay. Thank you. You're very nice to me, Dixie Bell. I feel like, I feel like I can do this, you guys. I feel like I can do this. Yes. Oh my gosh, look, here's my inspiration. It's avocado toast. <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be really fun because I normally pick a piece and then pick my colors out and my piece kind of inspires the colors and the choices I'm doing, but now the paint is really gonna inspire the finish that I have since somebody else picked it out for me. I was really happy to see the sea spray in there because of the veneer damage on here. It's gonna be easy to kind of camouflage that and I won't have to remove it. So I'm just gonna plug up and clean up any of those holes with this Dixie Mud. This works just like a wood filler. So I am just placing this all over. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of it and then I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I'm sure I will get a lot of hate for this because I typically do whenever I change the structure of a piece, but I'm just going to remove this back decorative piece because I'm going for a more modern farmhouse look and I want very clean lines. I am going to do lots of layers of paint and do a lot of distressing and have a lot of texture, but I just don't want that rounded piece on the back. My next step in prepping my piece now that my Dixie Mud is dry, I'm just sanding this with a 220 sandpaper and I'm going over the areas to make them nice and smooth, but I did end up just scuff sanding the whole thing since there was so much veneer damage on it. I just wanted everything to be kind of even, so I did do a scuff sand on the whole piece. I also decided to strip the two top portions here because I want to do a natural wood look. So I have a coarse sandpaper here and I'm stripping off the existing finish. Here I'm switching out to one of my foam abrasives so that I can sand this curved drawer without damaging it. So now I'm gonna do a faux stain on these two top pieces. I'm gonna tape them off to protect the areas that I don't wanna get the stain on. I'm gonna do this by taking the burlap and creating a wash. I have done this a lot on my channel, so you might have seen it before, but I just do a 50-50 ratio of water to paint and mix that up really well. 
I like doing a faux stain like this as opposed to using a oil-based stain because you have less fumes, you don't have a flammable surface or flammable rags, it dries quicker, and you can control the color a little bit more. Oil-based stains can really look different on different types of wood, and I am not the best at picking out what type of wood something is or identifying that. So this is just an easy way for me to stain, still see that wood grain, but maintain the color that I really want. I always like to apply this with a Dixie Belle premium chip brush because it has natural bristles and it gives you more of a wood grain type effect. Once I get my section all painted on, I just take a lint-free absorbent cloth and wipe back any of that excess paint. If I have spots that are splotchy or that aren't absorbing the paint as well after I wipe it back, I will go back in with my brush and just dry brush it a little bit to achieve the finish I want. I loved how much this stain turned out that I decided I wanted to do the decorative feet too. So I just grabbed my sander again with another one of my foam abrasives that can really get in the nooks and cranny of this foot. And I scuffed off as much of the existing finish as I could. And then I did the paint wash technique on here as well. And again, I'm doing a little dry brushing just to get an even finish. Okay, now it's time for my base color. I am gonna take chocolate and just put the tiniest smidge of caviar in it just to take a little bit of that warmth out. I'm switching to my synthetic angled mini to get all this paint on. I'm gonna paint this on in every direction. I'm going for a textured finish because I am going to layer up three different colors of paint so I am just painting in every direction. The idea behind using this brown is just to make this piece more cohesive when I go to distress. I would rather see this same color underneath and all the orange and different tones we have going on. The wood on the drawers is different from the wood on the top and on the sides, so I just wanted to make everything look the same on my base coat. I also taped off those pieces that I already have stained so they don't get any paint on them. I wanted to tone the holy guacamole down a little bit too, so I found this great recipe where I can mix it with burlap from my friend Yari at a Lily Moon Vintage. I'm just doing a 50-50 mix here and it's really going to mellow out and tone down this holy guacamole so it's not so guacamole-y. <laughs> I'm using my same brush I had earlier just cleaned off and I'm gonna paint the entire frame with this color. The sides are oak and had a very strong grain in them. So this is the only part of the piece that I did do up and down vertical strokes on. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up more of this color and this time add some sea spray to it. I mixed about four ounces of paint, so I'm just adding one scoop of this sea spray. It makes your paint really thick. It will be like a brownie batter-like consistency, and I'm gonna use this chip brush again to apply this because it has natural bristles and it's gonna really help me build up that texture. So with this layer, again, I'm applying in every direction and then I'm going back in and really stippling up my paint. I'm only doing this technique on the drawers because I wanna create a little bit of contrast between the drawers and the frame. Here is what it looks like after it is dried. All this yummy texture is gonna look so good when we go to distress. But now I'm gonna add my last coat of paint. I'm back to that synthetic brush and this is cotton and I'm just gonna coat my entire piece with cotton. Again, going in every direction as I paint.
quick tip for you, always remove your tape when your paint is still wet. That way it will leave a clean line and the paint will not chip when you bring up your tape. Okay, I know what you're probably thinking. Why on earth did you do all these layers of paint? It just looks like you painted it white. Why didn't you just paint it white? Well, now comes the fun part. I am going to distress this and I'm actually going to sand down the entire piece with a very fine sandpaper and it is going to get in all those ridges of the sea spray and really start seeing that green coming out. And I'm distressing the whole entire thing. So the whole entire thing, I'm gonna put sandpaper very lightly over it and you're gonna start seeing all those colors come out and it's gonna look like it's been painted several times. And when I go to top coat it, those colors are gonna kinda come out even more and it's gonna make the white look like a creamy, kind of off-white with that green and that brown coming out underneath. On the side, since they're really flat, I'm gonna just switch to a regular sandpaper. Again, this is a very fine sandpaper. This is a 320, and I'm just using that on the entire side to get some of that green and brown to come through. I also hit up the edge of my drawers and any corner kind of just to distress it a little bit further. Another tip, if you take your distressing too far, don't worry about it. I feathered in back some white paint down here because I didn't like the way the brown looked against the natural foot down here. Once I'm done, I'm just wiping back all my dust before I top coat. If you've been around here before, you will not be shocked that I'm going to be using clear coat and flat, my favorite Dixie Belle top coat. Um, I love how forgiving this is and I can apply it with my synthetic brush that I've been using on my whole piece. This is going to work well on my faux stain finish as well and it's going to be nice and flat when it dries and not compromise the color of the faux stain I created. This goes on milky white. It dries down flat and clear without any yellowing and the brush strokes really level out as it dries too. Another fun thing about this top coat is it really deepened the colors that were underneath the white. So it pulled out some more of that green and that brown and gave the white a really beautiful farmhouse warmth to it. Okay, we can't forget about the hardware. I sanded this down and I did the same faux stain on these to match the top and the feet. Okay, now it's time to incorporate just a little bit of bling. I'm gonna take my gemstone mousse in amber. This is water-based and really easy to clean up and work with. I'm gonna just take a little artist brush and I'm gonna outline the metal portion of these keyholes and bring those back to life. I love this close-up shot because you get a really good view at the texture that I created on the drawers. And that's it. I had two items that I didn't use out of my mystery box, but I had six paints. So I feel like I did a really good job trying to incorporate most of them in there. And here is the finished product. Here is my interpretation of avocado toast. I lost a lot of sleep over this one. I was so <laughs> nervous about this project and having somebody else pick out my paint for me. But you know, I just really remained true to who I am as an artist and my aesthetic. And I think I created something really beautiful. I'm so happy to kick off 2021 with a beautiful modern farmhouse piece. And I cannot wait to watch Brandy and Cristana open up their mystery boxes and see what they come up with. Thank you for joining me for my first video of 2021. Don't forget to get entered in that awesome giveaway. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. I'm very scared. <laughs> what is gonna be in here? This looks like a little cup for me. Like a present? Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh, look, it's party time.